Welcome everyone to JWolf Tech Broadcast. Today what I'm actually going to be discussing is computer cases and the different sizes that you actually have uh, in, in uh, your choosing of cases. That's one of the first things that I usually go through. Um, sometimes I go through, go through what platform I'm going to choose. But recently I've been deciding that uh, you need to really think about what kind of cases that you want. What type of size are you looking for? Everything nowadays is moving towards smaller form factor designs. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, ITX cases didn't even exist, or at least not, the, not to my knowledge. To my knowledge right now, the ME ATX and the ITX cases are really coming out and shining. And you're starting to see a lot more uh, products that come out for them, a lot more smaller designs. That being said, some people don't always want that. So they have, we have different options here to choose from. You got a full tower, uh, you got a mid, mid tower, and uh, kind of somewhat smaller mid towers like the Fractal R4 here, which I'm gonna get into better angle of these. Sorry that the angle's kind of condensed. Uh, all I have is a 50 millimeter lens to shoot with. So that limits my ability to widen things. I would have shot this downstairs, but I have some of my personal stuff here and I didn't want to carry it downstairs and risk the you know, dropping it as I'm going down there. So we're gonna go over each case. You can get budget uh, oriented cases in each design, uh, full tower, mid tower, you know, ITX cases. It's pretty easy to actually go about that and getting a budget oriented case for all different form factors. That's another thing we have to consider about is actually how much do you want to spend. With that being said, uh, you kind of see a good representation of uh, the cases back here. Hey guys, so the first case we're actually gonna go over is actually a very, very large full tower case. This is probably one of the biggest ones besides the 900D. This is the Corsair 800D. Uh, it was my older previous case. Sorry for the tape and everything here, but I, uh, at some point I'll get rid of it and uh, that's just for shipping purposes. But if you actually look at the size of this thing, it is about two feet long, about two feet wide, or tall, sorry, and about nine inches. Nine inches, nine inches uh, wide. If you look at this, uh, just from a practical standpoint, this is going to be the system you want if you're looking into water cooling. You can see that it is large. It has plenty of options for any type of radiators, uh, as you can see here. And what I usually find with larger cases like this, they're they are for water cooling. Now you can air cool with them. Some of the Core Master. Uh, cases you can do some air cooling with, but as you can see down here, it usually comes in different compartments. It's just better fitted that way to actually uh, put some radiators in there and get some good water cooling. But this is what I would consider to be a high-end case, is in that it has rubber grommeting, it has a good large motherboard cut out, all the interior is black, and it has plenty of expandability. What I find with large cases is that you usually have plenty of expandability no matter what. Uh, there's usually all kinds of room, you know, five and a quarter inch bays, plenty of SD and uh, hard drive cages. There's usually not an issue when it comes to room. And a few other things that you get with a little bit premium case is, like I said, the rubber grommet. You get plenty of uh, radiator mounts. Everything's black. It's usually all metal construction. Uh, this has almost no plastic on it at all. A little bit in the front, but that's about it. Uh, you get, uh, what else do you get? You get, uh, usually you get nicer fans for Sable Fractal. Some of their higher end cases, you do get a little bit better fans. Everything's black from all the from all the cables that you can see here for the front I/O, and that's just something that you don't see a lot when it comes to actually choosing your computer case. And this is a large case. I don't know what the weight is on it. Uh, probably 20 pounds, 20 plus pounds. It is very heavy, and these cases usually come with nice dust filters, which we see here. And overall, usually the construction is top notch. Now you can get some budget oriented cases in this uh, price range. Uh, if you want me to go through some different cases and options to purchase uh, for your cases, definitely let me know and I can, I can check into that. But this is an example of what a very tall, very large, uh, I used to love it. Uh, I didn't even water cool it and I still loved it because of the expandability, but at some point it starts to become a nuisance. If you're not water cooling, I don't think this is the way to go. Uh, there is other options that we're actually gonna get into. Hey everyone, so what we actually have here is what I would consider to be the most common case out there, and it is a mid tower. As you can see here, uh, the size wise, this is actually a smaller mid tower, I will say that. Some of Corsair's, uh, you know, 600 series, uh, 650D are, are a little bit larger than this, but this is what you would get for $100. This is a $100 case. Uh, and if we just try to compare size here, let's look at it there and let's pray to God this doesn't break the table. 
because this thing is not light. All right, hopefully that gets a good size representation of what it's actually like compared to a full tower. Sorry, I had to come back and just check. But that's the different sizes that you're actually gonna see when you compare that to a full tower case. We'll just take a look at it here. Hopefully be able to get all this in frame. But you can just see there is a difference in height. Uh, pretty significant difference, actually. I mean, you actually have about six inches. This is a larger mid tower. Uh, this is a larger full tower, and this is a smaller mid tower. So take that with a grain of salt. Uh, definitely look at the dimensions when purchasing. Kind of take that down there. And what you get with the mid tower. Mid tower is basically everything that's in a full tower, but they're more... Uh, kind of condensed. They have a, a more condensed frame to them here, which I actually really prefer. Uh, if we take a look here, they usually don't have as many uh, five and a quarter inch bays. We only get two here. On the full tower, we actually got, I believe, five? Six. Well, five. No, sorry. Yeah, five. And you usually don't have um, as many options there and as many options for hard drives and SSDs and that. So let's actually get into the inside. Now for $100, that's about the medium range for a mid tower. Uh, if you ask me, there's many more expensive options out there, but for $100, you're gonna get an excellent case. Uh, you can get a lot cheaper ones, but again, a lot cheaper ones may not be all black on the inside. They may not have dust filters uh, as we have here. There we go. They may or may not have dust filters that we see there. And overall, they may not have the best design layout. If you... So if we take a look here uh, on the inside of it, you can see, uh, let's get some dimensions here. It's actually about, uh, about 21 inches long. It's about the same length, lengthwise, but it's only nine inches there. And the height on it is a little over a foot and a half. Uh, actually about, hmm, about 18 inches is what we're gonna have. A little bit over 18, but it's about, about that. A uh, few things you're gonna notice here is that it's not really optimized for water cooling. You do see that right here that I did have to jam a radiator in there, but overall, it does allow you to fit an ATX board. Uh, you have plenty, there was actually two hard drive bays here. There's plenty of room for your hard drives. I mean, I can fit just as many hard drives in this as I could with the uh, 800D, which was a very, very much larger case. And that's, that's really it for, for looking at these. One thing to pay attention to, or that I find, is that step up and pay a little bit more for your case. You're gonna get a lot better features. We got some rubber grommeting back here. This one actually has noise dampening foam. Uh, there's dust filters everywhere. You get the nice fans with this too. This is a fractal fan, so you get some of their hydro bearing fans, which I'm a big fan of. Some people may not be, but I'm a huge fan of designs like that. So definitely look into something like that. Uh, there is $30, $40 cases out there that are pretty good, but I would actually step up and get a case something like this. So this is your standard mid-tower case. Just look at the size there. And honestly, you don't really lose any features out of it. One I actually have here is this is a MATX or an ITX computer case. As you can see, the size gets dramatically smaller. I mean, it's probably half the size this is a larger uh, micro or MATX case. It's probably half the size of your regular mid tower and it's probably one fifth the size of a very large full tower. But you can see here, you do have to sacrifice a little bit. We only have two five and a quarter inch drive bays, which honestly, you don't need more than two nowadays. People would probably complain about that in the past, but you don't need any more than that now. There's no reason for it. Uh, but if we just do some measurements here, we actually have 15. 15 inches by about 15, a little over 14 actually, we'll say 15 by 15 by eight. So you're, you're cutting the size down by three, four, five inches on each side compared to a mid tower. And if we just look at some of the insides here, this case is full, this is actually my server. So it explains how you can build a very small server and throw it in here, because there's a lot in here actually. But a few things to take out of these cases that they're usually oriented differently than how they used to be. For example, this one has the power supply mounted at the top. Most cases you don't see that. And you're also gonna see the motherboard is actually upside down. 
You may not be able to see that completely, but the motherboard tray is actually upside down. But as you can see here, you do have sacrifices that you're not gonna be able to fit a 120 millimeter radiator in here without modding. You could actually cut that out and fit one here in the front if you really wanted to uh, with a little bit of modding. Uh, but as you can see down here, it can fit, I mean, I have four hard, four, uh, hard drives in here and I have an SSD hidden, hidden down here at the bottom. There's plenty of room for a uh, lengthy graphics card. You can fit any graphics card made in here. So you're not, honestly, you're really not sacrificing all that much besides that water cooling. You're gonna have to do some modding to be able to fit some water cooling in here. You're gonna have to mainly go with air or a single uh, 120 millimeter water cooling solution. And for that type of solution, it's really going to be for um, just for your CPU. If you want to do a custom loop in here, you could. I have seen that before. But overall, I don't think you really give up a whole lot for these little cases. I am very biased towards small cases, mainly because I don't like the clutter. I don't like huge things just sitting on my desk taking up space. I'd rather be clean, sleek, and just be there. So if we just look at that, you can see... Um, one thing that I did forgot to mention is expansion slots. How many expansion slots are you actually wanting in your case? This is going to be important when we get to motherboards also, but if you just look at the expansion slots here, that's something that we're going to have to uh, definitely take into account.